Hi, I'm Jeff Merrill from JMYS. I'm on board a Krogan 48 North Sea with my good friend, Dennis Fox. Dennis, yeah. uh, we've probably known each other since about 2004 when you participated in the Nordhaven Atlantic Rally. You were the only Krogan to take part in that event. That's correct. We were uh, 5801, actually the first 58-foot Krogan that they built. And we had just returned from Trinidad, West Indies for two or three years and back to Florida to run across the Atlantic with the Nordhaven guys. That was great. So, and you had, a, it's a twin engine. Actually, it is the only single it's engine only single. 58 that Krogan ever built okay. because uh, they uh, had two options, twins or single. And I met a guy that had just done a transatlantic in a 48 foot boat. Yeah on the heart in Mobile, Alabama, after doing the Great Circle in 97, and uh, told him I was going to order this boat, and I said, you know, I'm trying to decide whether it should be a twin or a single. He was a giant of a man, and he said, ah, twins like two wives, you never keep either one happy. One, maybe <laughs> okay. one, maybe one. Yeah. So okay. I remember that, and I got the single. <laughs> now, you were the very first person to build a Krogan 58, but it wasn't your first Krogan, was it? No, actually, it was our third uh, when we ordered... 58 uh, or 48, which was number three of the 48 North Seas. North Sea, right. In 1995, um, we made an arrangement to trade that in on the 58. Okay, so you had the 48 to play around with while the 58 was being built. Yeah, and it was going to be an 18 month project that took four years. Well, <laughs> boats usually are difficult to uh, a schedule is one of the most dangerous things you can have on a boat. And as a boat builder, Building a boat on time is not very easy. Either. Well, the first one is especially tough, and they're a small company, and it was it was a challenge. But you got a great boat. We got a great boat. It was it did it it was fantastic. It's a forty eight on steroids. The yeah, all yeah, of the, the Krogans have the same hull, yeah, yeah, and they uh, really it really works well. Well, Jim Krogan did some great design work. Now you said that you had a forty eight and a fifty eight. Was there another Krogan before that? Well. We sold the 48, thinking the 58 was on the way on the ship, and uh, it turned out it wasn't. So we bought a 49 Krogan Express for two years, and another two years later, the 58 did arrive. Okay, so by 2004, when you did the Nordhaven Atlantic Rally, you were on your third Krogan product. Yes, it was. Third new one. Yes. Yeah. Third new one. That's really good. You know, this is the kind of guy that a yacht broker wants to find is a guy like Dennis Fox and Julie, who couldn't make it here tonight, but yeah. she's a big part of the team. And hi, Julie. Sorry you're not here. We should well, make bring her into the conversation. Well, she's a problem. I can't keep her off Yacht World. She's on Yacht World all the time. I'm trying to block her on Yacht World, but I can't. Yeah. Well, we, we don't. Julie, just go and enjoy Yacht World as much as you want. Well, the, the story is there's brokers that won't retire until they sell me a boat because they feel left out. So that's, you know. Well, and so there's a little bit more to that story. So we've mentioned three Krogans, but that's not the only brand that you've been a serial boat buyer of. Uh, no, we uh, ultimately wound up with five Krogans and then we got out of boating because we were getting old. You already had your last boat. We had our last boat. So we got out of boating. We sold the 48 Krogan and I mean, the 58 Krogan, the last one, we had two, two 58 Krogans. We had number 16 with the twin engine. Uh, so you've had a single 58 and a twin yes, 58. We both. And, we, and both of them we bought new from Krogan and uh, had the difference in the draft and basically the same boat, but uh, different hull form, different hull. It, sure. Uh, draft five foot three and the, the first one drafted six and a half. And you had two skegs on the twins versus behind the keel with the single. Yes. So probably a little better steering with the twin, a little better tracking. Uh, actually, not as good. Not really? No, okay. because the um, uh, the single, in a 58-foot, shorter boats maybe not so well, but in the 58-foot, it tracks like it's on rails. Yeah. And it's a six and a half foot draft, seven foot tank down, and it's a 100,000 pound boat. Okay. So it, it tracks. Solid. I think the smaller boats with the twins are probably better than the single but uh it at the end of the day it's the one you love the most that's the one you right, buy right you know? right right okay so after you sold your this is your fourth boat now is the krogan 58 but was there a nordhaven in there in the meantime or are you switched to the nordhavens later uh, we uh switched to the nordhaven after we had the five krogans 
Okay, so we've accounted for four of the Krogans, 258s, a oh, 48, yeah. and the Krogan Express. Well, we live in Bellingham, Washington on yeah. the East Coast. We have the Pacific Ocean, we have the Atlantic Ocean. Right. You got two oceans, you have to have two boats. You have to have two boats. Well, so, I mean, a guy like Dennis and Julie Fox, I mean, yeah. that's what they should do, yes. Well, actually, we bought the two Krogans because we get confused about the layouts of the boat. So it's more simple to have a 48 I, That's a very good solution to yeah. that to that problem. Right. Yeah. So which boat did you have on the West Coast then? We had 4819. That uh, believe it or not was it was a three stateroom, uh, right. forty eight Krogan, and we had that there for a few years. And then uh, Michael Samway and his family bought it, shipped it here, and homeschooled his kids and uh, did the Great Circle and had a great time on that boat. Okay, you probably read about that. It's muddy, muddy waters. Yeah, oh yeah, that's, sure. That's yeah, that yeah. boat. Well, and we're on Classy Katie, which is a three cabin Krogan forty eight right now. So you so you had forty eight number three and forty eight number sixteen, yeah. fifty eight number one and fifty eight number sixteen, I think. Sixteen. Yeah. And, and and threw in a Krogan Express. Express. Yeah, and the Krogan Express is really a fine boat. Oh, they're really beautiful. It boats. uh yeah. it it does a lot of things well. It's not a trawler, but got us to the Bahamas. And well, everything's a trawler. So you, you it's yeah, okay you can so say that. that. It's yeah. not a full displacement trawler, it's yeah, semi displacement. Yeah. But it did well in the open ocean. Okay, so you've had five Krogans, and you've had single engine, you've had twin engine, but you also dabbled in the Nordhaven world. Well, of course, we were, uh, we had been to Dana Point to talk to uh, Nordhaven early on about buying boats because we had met Jim and Susie Sinks. They lived in Friday Harbor. We're in Belgium. Right, and they circumnavigated on their Nordhaven 46 and also did the Great Loop. First one around, you know, and uh, we were going to buy the boat and go around the world like everybody does. Sure. You know, we don't all make it, but that's what we're going to do, you know, so... (laughs) So you may not make the adventure, but you all make it back. Yeah, you make it back. Yeah, yeah. Back. We just want to clarify that. It, 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 uh, life gets in the way, and it's a long way. So, yeah. You know, yeah. but uh, we um, had the, the five, we had the two stateroom 48 and the three stateroom 48, okay. and both those layouts are great. Uh, one is, it depends on how many you want. How many people you want to have on board. And, yeah. and, and when you have the three cabin and you don't have the guests, there's, those bunks add up. There's pretty nice shelves too. So good for storage. Well, and the, and the lower bunk is pretty, pretty big. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good, comfortable. Good size. You know, so. But I'm trying to get you to talk about the Nordhavens too. Nordhavens. So when did the Nordhavens come on the scene? Well, because we, how many Nordhavens have you had? Oh, well, we had five, but that's all we're going to have. It's not our fault. It's a salesman's fault. You know, they say, oh, this is a perfect boat. Yeah. You got to believe them. You know, right, so, right, right. but we uh, actually, we uh, sold the, we, we. So the first Nordhaven was? Um, 55, oh, 55, 24, I think. And that was a twin engine. It was twin. It's an excellent boat. Twin Nordhaven. So you've had a, okay, twin engine Nordhaven 55 was your first Nordhaven. Yeah. And we had departed from the trawler world for about two years. We, uh. Had a 55 Ocean Alexander here and a 62 Ocean Alexander in Bellingham and threw in a couple other boats. And and uh, then we decided, you know, we need to be back on a small boat. And so we, I mean, a full displacement boat. Yeah. So we bought the 55 in Dana Point and did the FUBAR in 2013. Okay. And uh, the boat was, it really performed well. I Having been on open water before and having been uh, on uh, the Krogan's, uh, I hadn't really spent any time on a Nord Hobbit. Uh, and it, it did a great job. That twin engine 55 is a very solid boat. Yeah, it is. And, uh, but you, you probably had it too long. What'd you have it for a couple months or no, we had it for a year. We brought it here. Um, and, uh, from California to Florida, from California down through, uh, the Panama and up to, uh, uh, Caymans and up here. And then right. we took it North up to the Chesapeake Bay and then back down here and, and then pretty good sea trial it was and we decided you know maybe this is a little too large we we should we should get a smaller boat okay you know there's no perfect boat i don't know if you well know. the perfect boat is the next boat oh, as right. you've that well found out yes yeah well we uh we listed it for sale and it sold right away and that's when we took a 40 nordhaven in trade in dana point that you eventually sold for right us. okay so you're right a uh, chinatsu one. Was Chinatsu, the was yes. the forty, and you took it in on trade, and yeah, I remember, yeah, I found the buyer for you on oh, that. Yes. Uh, uh, Marine tracking just put Chinatsu in uh, Cartagena yesterday. By the way, the fifty five version yeah. of Chin- wow, okay, yeah, these yeah, boats do are fifty eight Sea Foxes in Cartagena as well. So you have two of your ex boats in Cartagena today. Yes, today, and uh, there's 
um, half a dozen sea foxes running around here. If you go up to <laughs> Fort Pierce, there'll be a couple there. We're going to have a rendezvous, but we can't find a marina big enough to hold them all. Yeah. Out, so. Well, yeah, and there could be some more boats in the meantime. So. Well, we're, we're, this is it. We're on. Well, okay. But with the 55, you sold that, you took a 40 in on trade, and then you must have done something else. Uh, let's see. Um, we came back, we were here when we sold it. Right. And we were getting out of boating. And so uh, there was a 50 that needed to be rescued. You know, you rescue right. a pit. So we thought, well, this 50. You're a trawler rescuer. Uh, well, that was the first one we really rescued. But we'd rescued an Ocean Alexander before okay. that. And we knew the routine. Uh, and the, So Nordhaven 50 is now your third Nordhaven. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. The third one. Uh, and uh, we put that in shape. Uh, Rick Reardon owns that now. Right. And uh, it's in good hands. Ghost Rider 2 now. Right? Yeah, Ghost show. Rider 2. Yeah. And um, we took it up to Chesapeake Bay and back down. And uh, uh, life got complicated. Uh, and we said, you know, we let's not go to Sunset Bay. Let's go down to, to Key West. Okay. And so we're in Stewart, Florida now. And we'd been here before. Sure. So we went to Key Great West. Place. We were going to spend the winter down there. and. And there was a 57 sitting in Tarpon Springs that we heard was for sale. And they are too 57, long. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember what the name of it was, but it's uh, work not now, Gail Plummer. Yeah. And so I called uh, Gail and I, I didn't call Gail. I, I called the broker and I said, uh, I'd like to look at the 57. Are they ready to sell the boat? Yeah. Said, yeah, they are. So turns out we made them an offer that um, was supposed to insult them. Didn't. They said, okay. They said, okay. So, oh, no, now you're on your fourth Nordhaven. Okay, here we go. So, well, so Gail Plummer, who you sold it to later, I had sold his 50. Well, you had to sold the, it yet. Okay, but the Talbots had sold a 46 to buy the 50. This is a very interconnected world here with everybody. So, yes. Uh, Gail was in Mexico uh, in Puerto Vallarta, and uh, uh, that was a little later. That had to do okay. with the 76 or something like that. Yeah, because that was, you know, that was, uh, boat was, was the 57. North um, we had the, the 50 was in a uh, stock Island in Key West. Okay. And we went up, took a look at the 57 and made a deal on it, bought it. And we brought it up to old port cove and, um, uh, did some work on it, sat sure. around a little bit. And we said, geez, we're two boat owner. Now we have two Nordhavens sitting here in this marina. That's probably not so good. Well, the, the we've been as four boat owners before, yeah. so it's not all okay. bad. All right. a, a boat is an asset, you know, and the reason you buy a, Krogan or Nordhaven, other than you love it, is when you want to sell it, you get your money back or yeah. a great portion yeah, of it. Yeah, that's a good resale. It really product. is. And when you're buying new ones back earlier, there was so much inflation and oil and everything the else. Price you increases supported your purchase price. You, uh, If you did enough creative math, you never lost any money. <laughs> but it was pretty creative. I like you how know. you do your math. It yes. did. It yeah. did. It worked for us. So so we took we we uh, had the 50 and the 57 both at Old Port Cove. And, um, uh, I got to thinking that maybe I had made a mistake with the 57 because I had a boat. So I called Gail up and I knew that he loved the 57. Right. And I called him and I said, you know, if you want the boat, Gail, I'll, I'll sell it to you. And he said, well, I'll be a two boat owner. I said, Jeff can handle that. He'll take yeah, we sold that. his 50 very quickly. Uh, it took a couple hours and it was gone, you know. <laughs> yeah. But it was, you know, when they did the sea trial, the thing was just really oh, bad. It was... Well, it had that bad GFI. But he changed that right yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. There was one bad outlet on the yes. boat. That so was okay. this significant. I don't let him forget that either, by the way. Good, yeah. So uh, we uh, did sell him the 57, but Gail Plummer's a troublemaker. There's a troublemaker. Well, anybody yeah. hanging out with you is going to get a little bit of that rubbing off. I wouldn't blame Gail entirely, although, Gail, you are a troublemaker. Well, he's right there, you know. Yeah. We're looking at the 76 at... Uh, 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 Don, Don Wipert's uh, Don Wiper had boat. Yeah. And I had sold him that boat. Yes. I mean, just the small world thing gets smaller. Well, we had all done the FUBAR together. Yeah. And that's where I met both those guys. That's right. And so meanwhile... You guys were all in a calendar picture, I think. Weren't you with the Nordhaven calendar? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Uh, but it was... So you're thinking about a 76 at that point? Well, I was till we walked up to it. And you walk yeah. up to a 76, it's like, this is a ship, man. Where have I lost my mind? And Gail's, no, no, you can handle it. You can handle it. So, and he'd be there to help you. And he did. He threw that out, too. I'll help you move it wherever you want. And he did. He did. So so we um, uh, we did buy it. And uh, instead of going back, we were going to go to the old folks' home, you know? Yeah. You know, the, the motor home, rest home, funeral home thing. Yeah, right. That's the sequence of events. 
weren't ready for the motor home. No, so. no. So that was your last boat, though, the 76. That was the last 76. And uh, That was your fifth Nordhaven. So now you've had five Nordhavens, five yeah. Krogans. You've had singles. You've had twins. And um, I loved every one of them, by the way. You have a very famous quote. At least it gets attributed to you. And that is words to the effect of, if you've been on one Nordhaven or seen one Nordhaven, <laughs> you've seen one Nordhaven. And the same goes with the Krogan. You've been on one Krogan. You've You've seen one Krogan, and you've... Yeah. Unlike, unlike the automobiles, that they build a million in one model a year, it's hard to make two exactly the same. They use every, every original buyer puts their touch on it and yeah. learns from the, the, the people before them. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're, uh, I'm rescuing another boat right now. And That's right. I have a lot of sympathy for these boat builders. Man, it is... Whew. I mean... You found this one in Tennessee with... Gale, uh, Gale Kentucky, was, Kentucky, Kentucky. Yeah, okay. we don't say Tennessee around Gale because that, that's right. Yeah, you yeah. know. Well, anyway, uh, Sorry, Gale. Um, we found it up in uh, Warsaw, uh, uh, Kentucky, Louisville, where Gale is from. And, and once again, he said, "Oh, I help you bring it back, you know, and we'll get it running." So we went up there. This is an aluminum boat. It's yes, it is. It's a Bruce Roberts design. Okay. Bruce Roberts designs a lot of sailboats. He's a Brit. He uh, designs sailboats and small trawlers. And this is a 57, 59, I'm not sure. It's, uh, it's, it says 57 Bruce Roberts design on the side, and I yeah. guess that's what it is. Okay. But it's it's a fine boat. It has twin C12 cats in it, a couple of Onan generators, and really good bones because it's been in fresh water since 2005, and it has... Well, it was brand new when you bought it. I mean, it was several years old, but it really hadn't been used, right? You were really the first consumer, the first user of the boat? Um, I bought it from the original owner, and it had 35 hours on the generators and 50 on the mains. It has twin 600 cats in it, and it is drop dead gorgeous, man. Yeah. I mean, when you touch it, you it's You give running. me a tour of that boat. It is great. And boat. Uh, we're bringing it up to standards. What are your plans with that boat? Uh, that's our condo on the water, since it's our. Well, you're going to sell it probably eventually because that's what you I'm do. Gonna, I'm going to I'm going to donate it to one of those boat things. So you get a big tax write off. Okay. You know, when I'm in the funeral home thingy. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. when I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to get my money back from IRS. That's what we have in mind. Um, but it's uh, uh, today's project, and we spent last winter after selling the '76. We really thought, you know, this is. You've done a lot of the places, been, you've been in Nova Scotia a few times, you've been around and you get kind of bored. And so you start thinking that the cost Different of the adventure. entry. Yeah. And they thought, you know, we'll, we tried the condo. So we tried the condo. We did Maui for a month, Palm Springs for a month, then came here for three or four months. And I told Julie, I said, I can't do this. I, got, I have to have a boat here. Yeah. Well, we have a boat in Bellingham we were going to ship here. Is that the Willard? Yes. It's a 60 foot Willard. It's a great boat, yeah. but it doesn't have air conditioning. And it's which is fine in the Northwest, but yeah, not so fine of, here. It has a Cabola furnace yeah, there, you know, as good as you can get. but yeah. uh, it's not here and it's expensive to get it here. So we said, let's just take the money that we would spend on it and go find another boat. Okay. And so she found this boat in Kentucky. She actually found two of them out there. And uh, when a boat is born and raised in fresh water, it's a whole different animal. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's like nothing corrodes, you know. And yeah. so uh, we, Gail and uh, Carl Kalita, uh, on um, uh, Bravo and, and Nora and, and Mary all brought it down from Kentucky with me and we never waited for a part anywhere. Nothing broke. We came the 1,500 miles and just drove it down. You, know, you hit on a good topic there and that is the community of all these owners. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody helps everybody. Um, it's a small community. It is. It is. It's, it's a great community. And uh, if you need help, you've got friends. Uh, well, we sold uh, Chinatsu uh, 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 the forty. Uh, the, no, the, oh, the, the fifty-five. The 55 yeah. They bought from us, uh, and Richard and Ollie. His father is 95, 94 years old. He's in Britain, England, and he became ill. And they were in Saint Augustine. And Richard called me and said, "I need to get my boat to Beaufort. Can you help me?" So you get in your car, you drive up Saint Augustine, and you take off and get the boat you to move Beaufort. You the boat so you could go be and with they, his they father. They fly out, yeah, you know. That's great. And so uh, and Michael Warren with uh, Katie Krogan, uh, he owns a 55. He's had a 52 and a 55. Right. Galactica, I think. Galactica, yeah. yeah. He's uh, He helped me move the 55 and the 76. Uh, but it's a difference. When you when you have a 76 versus a 55, 
Uh, you can't run the ICW. You have to no, have crew, have to weather, mechanical, all the stars have to line up. Correct, yeah. And it's a different style of boating. And that's really why we sold the 76. It just changed what we did too much. If you could go back in time, yeah. what would it, which which Krogan would you want to go back to and which Nordov would you want to go back to? Because you're right now you're you're not on either model. Yeah, we're it's even five and five. We yeah, 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 yeah. Or you could go six and six and we'd be happy to help you. I know, I'd be happy to help okay, you. Thank you. But yeah. uh, the answer is we had the most adventure on the 5801. Okay. And that, so that boat is more dear to us. Okay. And we had the most comfort um, on the 76 Nordhaven. And we went from here to the Broad Doors and back in Nova Scotia, and we never hit a wave in that boat. Yeah. And Gail was in the 57 over there with things flying around in the cabin <laughs> and right beside us. And uh, that was amazing. That was a ship. Uh, and so those are the two that we enjoyed the most, I think. What what advice would you have for somebody who's thinking about getting a trawler to go off and do some cruising? Depends on how serious they are. Yeah. If they Any of these will do it safety wise you're right so you say okay uh if you had all the money and the money didn't matter then you should look at um how many people you're going to have with you and just how boat big a boat do you really right. need? how many cabins do you need how many heads yeah. because when we were in the mid we were on our 58 krogan and there it's hard to find moorage for a 58 boat so in the mid. Boat over there, yeah. they have the big boats but most places do not they're 15 meters or less and it's difficult so if you're going to spend time in the mid, buy a 43, 45, or maybe a 50. Well, you've got a boat on the Pacific, a boat on the Atlantic. You mm -hmm. you need to get one in the mid, don't you? Or have you already done that? Is that out of your system? Well, we, no, we spent a couple of years over there. So okay. we're, we're kind of, yeah. Yeah, we won't be, um, I don't plan on going back there. <laughs> okay. We never go crew on somebody else's boat over there. Uh, you know, it's it's more fun when it's your own boat. I, I have to, right. you know, we've all crewed and we enjoy it. But to tell you the truth, it's less stressful when you don't own the boat. But it's just more fun when it's your boat. And, it is. It is. Uh, and so uh, we prefer, uh, we travel by ourselves almost all the time. The only time we don't travel by ourselves is if we're on passage. Doing a long trip over, overnights. It has to be over two nights. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll do it alone for two nights. But after that, I'm tired. So and Julie's a good sport. She loves it. You know, she's a trooper. She's she awesome, is. yeah. Well, her, she's... We, uh, to put up with you, well, right, that, Julie? I mean, that's... next Friday is 56 years, so I guess we've got it figured out, or she does anyway. And yeah. so, uh, and she, uh, she's encouraged me to, when we did the transatlantic, it's a big deal. That is. And I was just come back in Trinidad a couple years out, and I was pretty tired, and then, you're fixing all this stuff and everything. And, and to get ready new, for that, that's an adventure. Yeah, we're putting yeah. new batteries in Martinique and on and on. Wow. And it's like, you know, I'm not sure I want to do this. She said, yeah, we're, we want to do this. You're going to do this. Let's go. So she's she's always been there. She's never backed up. But our deal is, hey, if it's going to be really rough, you take the plane. I don't know if you remember, but when we went to Bermuda, um, they left on a schedule. And we don't sail on a schedule. No. We sail on by the weather it's so, tough when you're managing a fleet you have to have some kind of a schedule they needed yeah. to go and they knew it would be safe but it's uncomfortable so i went to her and i said honey you can you can go with us you're not going to like the trip or you can hang around to fort lauderdale a couple of days and go to bermuda to a resort and um you can just uh meet me on the dock yeah so she yeah. said i'll see you in bermuda yeah <laughs> so she did and then but she did the uh, bermuda to the azores leg and then she met me in in uh uh, Gibraltar after that okay. she and her granddaughter hit England for about a week and wow but uh, you, you got to make it everybody has to be happy and to tell you the truth you may not know this but generally this isn't the women's idea it's the guy's idea and the women are saying yeah honey sure buy the boat it's okay we'll do that. they need to be safe they need to be comfortable they need to have their stuff and I mean, some of the women are doing the engine room checks and they're the engineers on the boat and, and helping with navigation so it's an interesting how the roles you have to kind of be able to do a little bit of everything has to work for both people. You're right. Um, and we've met a lot of couples from, we've done the Great Circle twice. So you meet a whole group of people. Yeah. And uh, we've been up and down the coast and everywhere. And it's like, you meet all sorts of couples. And I tell you the truth, I've we've met people in harbor and the guy is in heaven. And the woman is about ready to leave. He, it's like, what's going on? Well, he takes her out in the bad weather. and Yeah, you, got, you have to make it fun and comfortable. And... Yeah. So uh, the boats can always take it, but the people inside, if we're gone over two nights, 
the boat doesn't move unless we use a weather router. When we did the FUBAR, we used a separate weather, weather router than they did. When we did the transatlantic with the NAR guys, we had already used three weather routers coming back from Trinidad yeah. because I wanted the one that did the best job. Yeah. And when we did the NAR, we kept our weather router along with the NAR guys. And but we had the luxury of deciding which one did the best job for us. Yeah. And because it's a big deal. Now, weather is, is crucial. There's no doubt about it. If you're only, if you're coastal wise, okay, you get beat around for two or three hours. But uh, if you're going night and day and night and day, you need to have, you need to know what you're up against. Yeah. And if you got to have uh, eight hours of really bad weather at the end of a four day trip, Okay. That's a small percentage. That's what you do. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's never going to be perfect. No, and even a good weather forecast can be off a little bit, so sure. you have to be prepared. Yeah, and our tolerance, the boats take a lot more than people do. Yeah. But Julie's, Contents, Julie's famous for capsizing in the cabin on the 58. We were uh, between uh, Bermuda and the Azores when it, about two days out of the Azores, and she would sit in her Ekronis chair by the back door because right. that's the smoothest yeah, place. Yeah, further after you are, yeah. more comfortable. And a big one hit us, and the chair capsized. She rolled across the floor, so we tease her about capsizing in the in the boat. Yeah. Uh, but the tables are fixed, and you could grab the table. Yeah. That was rare to have that. But that's, It only happened the one time. Well, we, we changed course. You may not remember, but we went around the north side of uh, the Azores. We didn't go around the south side. Us and Scott Strickland and a couple other boats because we needed to change heading. And get so, a more comfortable ride. yeah, to get a better ride. And then, of course, the last eight hours of the trip, we were in the lee of the island and the other guys were out there getting their head <laughs> handed to them. But they stayed with the fleet. Yeah. We right. got in trouble. Yeah. They well, said, you had yeah, another fleet. You had, you know, we had, we had, had about four of us and we had a great ride and they didn't do so well. But so you've done, you've done solo stuff, you've done group stuff. Uh, what do you prefer? Um, you know, they both have their benefits we really have had fun with the groups yeah uh meaning the the foobar and the and the and the well the camaraderie and the friendships you develop there yeah and we we're, <clears throat> we're still friends with uh every everybody that did the uh nordhaven atlantic rally yeah. is still scott and mary flanders were here last week and we they spent the night with us on the boat and went to breakfast and get oh, caught up that's good he's uh uh he's in bad way he doesn't have a big boat Matter of fact, you should call Scott. <laughs> Scott, I'm going to call you. Yeah, call him. Call him. Yeah, Tell us. Yeah. Dennis said call him. Yeah, yeah. He's in trouble. Now. He's, yeah. in, he's in trouble. And his great boat. people. I mean, they I actually helped them sell their boat. Did you? Yeah, Egret. Yeah. Well, uh, probably the one of the most famous Nordhavens ever. Though. They, as far as I'm concerned, they hold the record. Yeah. Uh, Jim and Sue, these things did great, but Scott and Mary just quit packed. Them. Well, and they're both such good photographers and writers, yeah. and they just had that incredible blog. I mean, they're really shared their experience and inspired a lot of people. Well, little inflatable is up at Atlantic Out Basin for sale right now. So he's ripe. Give him okay. a call. Yeah, I think the stock market treated him good too. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, uh, but it's hard to go back. And I know Egret is uh, not available to buy. And oh, everything. Brian and Marlene have it and they're loving it. And yeah. I, we just talked to them the other day. Um, uh, getting out is not really a real good idea because after a while, we've, we've been doing this since 1995 and it becomes what you do we don't play golf we don't right. do that we go boating and uh it you meet the same people all the time it's your hobby that's, it's your that's passion what you do. what you do yeah and i'm fortunate because julie enjoys it as much as i do that's that's crucial um so anyway that uh we're probably this may not be the last boat but uh like you can it. say that. I can say it. Can always be proven wrong later. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's happened before. Dennis, we could probably keep talking. I think this has been really fun spending some time with you. Thank well, you very much for sitting down. Welcome. Thanks yeah. for taking care of business for us too. Oh yeah, I, it's been fun. Yeah, um, yeah. And you're fortunate to be able to make your living in an industry you love. I am. Not everybody it's, gets to follow their passion to make a living. It is. It's been a incredible career so far and it's still going strong. And I, you know, loved meeting the people. And well, I tell salesmen, you know, you're not selling boats, you're selling adventures and dreams. And that's what you're doing. Well, and a, a Krogan and a Nordhaven doesn't need any selling. The boats sell themselves. You just have to help them find the right boat for what, how they want to use the boat. Yeah. And so that's part of the process is figuring how are you really going to use it how much time are you going to spend on board what do you really want to spend i mean do you want to rebuild a boat or do you want to get a boat that's yeah. ready to go there's a lot of a lot of aspects there but that's fun is meeting different types of people all kinds of vocations that they've had and but they all share that 
that uh, that joy of getting out on the water and breathing the salt air and traveling across the horizon. I got some texts from Gail today. He's in Georgetown with about five other Nordhavens. And, <laughs> uh, if you want to see the latest photos of a swivel giving out on a Nordhaven, he's got them of oh, the anchor no. as they're pulling. He had to dive on it and find it. And so uh, they have a swivel that nobody should be buying anymore. Oh, boy. Anyway. Wow. We'll talk to Gail about that. Yeah. Okay. Well, Dennis, thank you very much. Gotcha. Really enjoyed talking to you. Thanks, everybody. So we have some more cruising conversations coming down the road. Uh, you never know when we're going to run into somebody as fun and enjoyable as Dennis Fox. But Dennis, I really appreciate your time and stay tuned to the JMYS YouTube channel. Hi, trawler fans. Thank you for watching the JMYS YouTube video channel. I'm fortunate to be offshore again. If you'd like to subscribe to this channel, you can click the button below. We also like to publish other listings and other trawler skills videos. You can click on one of those on the side to watch those. Thank you very much for your thumbs up. We love having you watch our videos. We love putting them together for you and hope you come back again soon.